Today we'll be walking through the new BPA Report UI. The biggest advantage is that it provides increased performance and scalability for future new features. You will also notice several big usability improvements. First, let's look at the Security Policy Capability Adoption Heat Map and its views. Here is the Best Practice Assessment and its components. Under Device Info, we have information on managed firewalls, system information, license information, dynamic updates, decryption, and so on. Under Learn More, we have links pertaining to BPA and various other links that provide information on security posture and improvements. One such link is the BPA content homepage on Live Community, which has all the information and resources for the BPA, such as videos, blogs, release notes, and so on. The second link here is a guide to our methodology for transitioning to best practices. The next feature is short videos. We have introduced short videos for each best practice check. Each short video has a purpose, a security value, and how to fix or make the configuration changes in the UI. When we click on this new video button, it gives us links for each individual video. When we click on one like this, it opens a new tab with the video and related context. These videos really help us in ensuring that we understand the purpose of the best practice checks, and if it adheres to the network, we can go and make the changes. The next feature is on the Summary page. In the BPA Summary, we have added links to mapping definitions. Let's take an example. Let's say Contingency Planning. When I click on Contingency Planning, it leads me to the Mapping Definitions page where the filters are applied with Contingency Planning. So I only see the best practice checks associated with Contingency Planning. I can review the passing score, identify the scores here, and if there are any low values, if this is my priority, I can focus on improving parameters there. One such check is the Log on High DP Load. When I click on that, it takes me further to exactly where the check is in the BPA report. This gives a journey for the customer to go from summary to the mapping definitions and to the specific section of the BPA report. If you don't know where or how to fix it, you can click on the new video link. If you need more rationale and context, you can click on the question mark to get more details on it. We have introduced device group hierarchy, where we simply need to know which device group, in this case DG Plano, where we want to look for adoption, and it automatically selects its parents, grandparents, and so on, so we have a complete context with its hierarchy. When I apply this, it gives me results only specific to that device group and its parents so I can get the full adoption context. This is available on Panorama Run BPA reports. The last feature we'll cover is the Best Practice Spreadsheet. This spreadsheet is available from the bundle of files created when the BPA is generated. We have introduced a new column called BPA Verdict. In the past, we only had failed checks. Now we have introduced failed, note, and pass, including all three types of BPA checks. We can use the status column so we can utilize this as a working reference document and make the changes and track status and progress. We hope you enjoy these new updates, and thank you for watching.